Live from the ABC7 Broadcast Center, this is ABC7 News at 11 on your side. And first at 11, peaceful protest in our area tonight, all in support of a teen killed by police in Ferguson, Missouri. Hundreds gathered calling for an end to police brutality as well as healing. And for the first time in Missouri tonight, the State Highway Patrol is supervising security on the streets. Missouri's Governor Jay Nixon put the patrol in charge of us after a series of violent clashes between protesters and police. And it appears that that change in command has made a difference. Instead of violence, reports of protesters stopping to shake hands with the troopers tonight, even giving them hugs. Robert Lyles live in our newsroom tonight with more. Robert? Well, Leon, those hugs came after Missouri State Highway Patrol marched to the shooting scene with demonstrators. A vast difference over last night. Still, criminal justice scholars tell ABC7 Ferguson police crossed the line days ago when they turned Ferguson into a militarized zone. Demonstrators return this time with Black Panthers. We need to get everyone to calm down and try to uh, bring some peace to this. But instead, last night, police used armored trucks, fired tear gas and concussion grenades at demonstrators and two journalists. We're seeing snipers being set up on top of armored vehicles. Tim Lynch of the Cato Institute says if Ferguson, Missouri conjures images of Iraq and Afghanistan, it's because you're seeing the same armored vehicles and same seek and destroy tactics. Uh, they both wear uniforms, they both carry arms, but that's where the similarities end. Lynch, the director of the Project on Criminal Justice, says despite the president's call for peace. Now is the time for an open and transparent process to see that justice is done. Police in Ferguson, like many suburban departments, have been militarized. It's an alarming trend. In the mid-1990s, the war on drugs spawned the 1033 program, authorizing the transfer of military equipment to police, and that spawned a feeding frenzy. They're acquiring uh, uh, grenade launchers for suburban America. So callouts once reserved for hostage situations were abandoned. Now Lynch says patrol officers suit up. So then the pressure begins to build to bring it out and you start using it in more routine policing activity. He claims fire and rubber bullets, camouflage and armored vehicles incite and exacerbate enemy combatants. Now Senator Claire McCaskill is calling for demilitarization. We need a new person to come in and to rein in these police officers from what we've been seeing the past few nights. Now there is more. Nearly $450 million in military equipment was given to police agencies nationwide in 2013. Ferguson apparently received a couple Humvees and a trailer, but other police departments assisting Ferguson, they received 20 mine-resistant armored vehicles. As the latest live in the newsroom, I'm Robert Lyles, ABC7 News. Thank you, Robert.